Hi guys, hiding. I hope you're great. My name is Jesse, and welcome to yet another amazing tutorial today. Today I'm going to show you how you can carry out accuracy assessment within Quantum GIS. So this is our satellite imagery. This is a CNL2 image, and then this is what the classification that we have been able to do. So I'm going to show you how you can assess the quality or the accuracy of this classification. Yeah. So this is a continuation from our first tutorial or lecture about supervised classification in quantum GIS. If you've not checked out that tutorial, kindly do, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let us dive into the tutorial. So guys, as you see, this is my satellite image array yeah so if i can zoom in further you can be able to see i've selected four classes this is water uh, the water and then the wetland so this is what i've considered as a wetland yeah and then i have vegetation like the green and then i have built up and bare ground so the rest is built up and what and bare ground so those are the four classes i've considered for what for demonstration but depending on your classification, you may choose the, the, the number of classes you want and according to your, what, to your classification scheme. Yeah. So uh, what I want to show you is the classification. So I'll just enable this. So as you see, this is the classification. So this color represents water. This one represents the wetland. And then the green, of course, the vegetation. And then the what? The built up. Yeah, so I want to be able to assess what the accuracy of this classification within what? Within this software. So to do that, what you should first do is to classify your image. And then after, you come here and create a new shape file that you'll call your what? Your test data. I hope that is fine. So I'll just come here to layer, create layer, new shape file layer. And then I will browse to where I want to save it. And then I'll give it a name as, let me call it test data 2. Because I already have a file here which is test data. So I'll call it test data 2. And then the geometry type, it's a polygon. And then of course you can change the connect system to whatever you want. And make sure here you create a new attribute. So since for our classification we use the macro class, so I'll create a new attribute which is the macro class ID, MCID, and it's a what? A whole number. And then I'll add it to the field. Actually, I can even delete this what? This ID, but let me just leave it there. And then I can do what? I can save. And then I can press OK. So when I press OK, as you see, a new shape file has been created. So this is the shape file. It's called what? Test data. So in this shape file, I'm going to edit and then I add what? Train that or not train data samples, rather test data samples for each of the what? The class. So depending on the time you have and depending on the project scope, you may choose a number of what? Of test data samples. You get it? So, but it's always a good practice to choose a vast number of what? Of samples. So I'll just click on this test data too and then I to go on the editing mode. Then I click here, the polygon, and then I start creating my what? My test data samples. So I'll create one for water. And then the MCID is this, what you see. Now I call it one for water. Yeah. I'll create a lot of data samples for water, still one. And then also one so let me just create only okay let me also add another what another sample here for water so i'll call it one yeah so after i'm going to add one for wetland so i'll i told you this is my wetland yeah also wetland the macro class id is two and then further the macro class ID, I'll give it to 
even this is a wetland so it will be two and then this will be two yeah for demonstration i'll use that and then i will press save and then i still have the vegetation so i can zoom in here then i select vegetation the macro class id is three then i can further select the vegetation then the macro class id is three still the vegetation and the macro class id is three there is still vegetation here the macro class id is three like i have told you you can create a number of test samples as many as you do what and you want and then the, the higher the number the better the what the testing and make sure you've distributed them throughout your what your study area so i'll go to the last class which is built up and bare ground and then i'll begin by sampling here so the macro class id is four yeah let me sample here the macro class id is four Oh, so let me also sample here. Mm, so macro class ID is four. Yeah. Let me also do this. So the macro class ID is four. And then, lastly, I can stop here. Macro class ID is four. So make sure you save. And then turn off what editing so you can open the attribute table of this created shape file and check whether you have populated all your samples with what with a nick id or macro class id yeah so for me i've populated them here so i'll just close the next thing that i'm going to do is that i'll go here to scp and then i go to post processing then i come here to what to accuracy so when I click accuracy, the first option here is what is accuracy assessment. So for accuracy assessment, I'll refresh this. So this is select the classification to assess. So my classification name is classification. And then here I'll also refresh. Then select the reference vector or raster. So you can use a raster or vector. So for my case, I'm going to use a what? A vector. So I'll select the vector to be test data two. And then the vector data field to consider, I'll select the MC what? The MC ID. Because it corresponds with what? With this, the, the, the MC class ID of the what? Of the classification. I can take this, use no data value as zero. And then I click what? Run. So when I click run, the software will prompt me to save my what? My assessment results. So I'll create a new folder here. I'll call it what? Assessment yeah and then inside there i'll save assessment yeah dot tiff then i press okay and then i'll run it so depending on how big your study area is and then your data samples and how fast your computer is the algorithm will do what will run and then it finishes running it will prompt you by a sound or a notification that it has been it has what it has finished computing what the accuracy what the accuracy parameters yeah so after some time as you can see here we have an output how do we interpret this we have an error matrix which is what a pixel count so this is the confusion matrix but in form of what of pixels we have the classified and then we have the reference so this is the first class second class third class, fourth class, first class, second class, third class, fourth class. And then so this is the same thing that has been represented as what? As area, you see? The areas. It is a confusion matrix, but it has been represented in what? In form of area, yeah. So as you can see here, we have the what? A confidence interval, the 95%, we have the producer accuracy, which is 49, we have the user accuracy, which is 100, we have a kappa coefficient, and then we also have our overall accuracy, which is 36, of course that is very poor, 
and then we have a kappa what heart classification yeah so uh, depending on what you want to 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 to, to do what to assess or to use as your metric you can come here and then you extract it so it is just simple you just copy this and then paste it in what in an excel sheet yeah so that's how you can do what you can assess accuracy within quantum gis thank you for watching this tutorial